Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on Thursday, the 5th of October, 2023. Our evening prayer begins with our prayers of preparation. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> And uh, our psalm for this evening is, him for this evening, sorry, is a setting of Psalm 139 by Bernadette Farrell. O oh God, you search me and you know. O oh God, you search me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. When I walk or lie down, you are before me. Ever the maker and keeper of my days. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. And with love everlasting you besiege me. In every moment of life and death you are. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you have known its meaning through and through. You are with me beyond my understanding, God of my present, my past and future too. Although your Spirit is upon me, still I search for shelter from your light. There is nowhere on earth I can escape you, even the darkness is radiant in your sight. For you created me and shaped me, gave me life within my mother's womb. For the wonder of who I am, I praise you. Safe in your hands, all creation is made new. This evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm for this evening is the uh, second half of Psalm 78, beginning at verse 40. <clears throat> How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Again and again they provoked God and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power in the day he redeemed them from the enemy. How he wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. He turned their rivers into blood so that they could not drink of their streams. He sent swarms of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which brought them ruin. He gave their produce to the caterpillar, the fruit of their toil to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hailstones and their sycamore trees with the frost. He delivered their cattle to hailstones and their flocks to thunderbolts. He set loose on them his blazing anger, fury, displeasure and trouble, a troop of destroying angels. He made a way for his anger and spared not their souls from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. He smote the firstborn of Egypt, the first fruits of their strength in the land in the tents of Ham. But he led out his people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them to safety and they were not afraid, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. He brought them to his holy place, the mountain which his right hand took in possession. He drove out the nations before them and shared out to them their inheritance. He settled the tribes of Israel in their tents. 
Yet still they tested God most high and rebelled against him who would not keep his commandments. They turned back and fell away like their forebears, starting aside like an unstrung bow. They grieved him with their hill altars and provoked him to pleasure, displeasure with their idols. God heard and was greatly angered and utterly rejected Israel. He forsook the tabernacle at Shiloh, the tent of his presence on earth. He gave the ark of his strength into captivity, his splendor into the adversary's hand. He delivered his people to the sword and raged against his inheritance. For I consumed their young men, there was no one to lament their maidens. The priests fell by the sword and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord woke us out of sleep, like a warrior who has been overcome with wine. He struck his enemies from behind and put them to perpetual shame. He rejected the tent of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but he chose the tribe of Judah and the hill of Zion, which he loved. And there he built his sanctuary like the heights of heaven and the earth, which he founded forever. He chose David also his servant and took him away from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes with their lambs he took him, that he might shepherd Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he shepherded them, shepherded them with a devoted heart and with skillful hands he guided them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And a reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 1. <clears throat> Ahaziah had fallen through the lattice in his upper chamber in Samaria and lay injured. So he sent messengers, telling them, Go inquire of baal Zavuv, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Get up and go and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say to them, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal Zebul, the God of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, You shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but you shall surely die. So Elijah went. The messengers returned to the king, who said to them, Why have you returned? They answered, there came a man to meet us who said to us, go back to the king who sent you and say to him, thus says the Lord, is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Baal Zavu, the God of Ekron? Therefore, he shall not, you shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but you shall surely die. He said to them, what sort of man was he who came to meet you and who told you these things? And they answered a hairy man with a leather belt around his waist. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of 50 with his 50 men. He went to Elijah, who was sitting at the top of a hill, and said to him, O man of God, the king says, come down. But Elijah answered the captain of 50, if I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Again, the king sent to him another captain of 50 with his 50, and he went up and said to him, O man of God, this is the king's order, come down quickly. But Elijah answered them, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. Then the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Again, the king, the king sent a, the captain of a third 50 and his 50. So the captain, of, the third captain of 50 went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and entreated him, O oh man of God, please let my life and the life of these 50 servants of yours be precious in your sight. Look, fire came down from heaven and consumed the former two captains, the 50 men with their 50s, but now let my life be precious in your sight. Then the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him, do not be afraid of him. So he sat out and went with him to the king and said to him, Thus says the Lord, because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal Zabu, the god of Ekron, it is because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word. Therefore you shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but you shall surely die. And so he died. 
according to the word that Elijah had spoken. His brother Jehoram succeeded him as king in the second year of King Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat of Judah, because Ahaziah had no son. Here ends the first reading. And our Thursday canticle, Great and Wonderful. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the ages, who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. And a second reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney, a certain Tertullus, and they reported their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Your Excellency, because of you we have long enjoyed peace and reforms have been made with for this people because of your foresight. We welcome this in every way and everywhere with utmost gratitude. But to take you no further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. We have in fact found this man a pestilent agitator, um, an agitator against all among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple and so we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn from him concerning everything of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the charge by asserting that all this was true. When the governor motioned him to speak, Paul replied, I cheerfully make my defence, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation. As you can find out, it is not more than twelve days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. They did not find me disputing with anyone in the temple or stirring up a crowd either in the synagogues or throughout the city. Neither can they prove to you in the charge which they now bring against me. But this I admit to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I worship the God of our ancestors, believing everything laid down according to the law written in the prophets. I have a hope in God, a hope that they themselves <clears throat> also accept that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. Therefore, I do my best always to have a clear conscience before God and the people. Now, after some years, I came to bring arms to my nation and to offer sacrifices. While I was doing this, they found me in the temple, completing the rite of purification without any crowd or disturbance. But there were some Jews from Asia. They ought to be here before you to make an accusation if they have anything against me. Well, let these men here tell what crime they found when I stood before the council, unless it was this one sentence that I, I called out while standing before them. It is about the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. But Felix, who was rather well informed about the way, adjourned the hearing with the comment, when Lysias the tribute comes down, I will decide your case. Then he ordered the centurion to keep him in custody, but to let him have some liberty and not to prevent any of his friends from caring for his needs. And here ends the second reading. Our responsory. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. And the Magnificat. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. 
He has shown strength with his arm and to scatter the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lonely. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. And so as we come to our prayers of intercession, we pray as always for the church throughout the world, for its unity and for its peace. We pray for the church, particularly in this diocese of St. Asaph, praying for Gregory, our bishop, for the responsibilities that he bears on behalf of the church in this place, and giving thanks for his leadership. We pray for this church of St. Giles and for the Wrexham mission area, praying especially for Jonathan, the mission area leader, and praying here for the possibilities of the future hub church and for the plans that are being formed for that. We continue to pray for the needs of the world, praying especially for all people according to their needs, and especially those who are afflicted by violence and conflict, praying for peace in Ukraine, we pray especially for those afflicted by natural disaster. We pray for those facing the cost of living crisis here closer to home. And we pray for those who are sick amongst them, Louise, Gordon, Joshua, Jess, Maldwin, Maya, Stan, Edwin, Glyn, and for the departed among them, Vernon. For the unity of the church in witness and proclamation of the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace and stability of all peoples and for the leaders of the nations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For places of work, education and leisure, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends and all whom we love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and for the suffering and those who minister to their needs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the dying and the departed, that they may be granted rest and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. And so we pray. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks once again for joining, uh, joining me and uh, wish you a very good evening indeed. Thank you.